old earth creationists, young earth creationists. What is it? Last time we covered the academic origins of Afro-Asiatic and Semites. This was important in understanding the origins for the ancestors of the Israelites. Because after all, the Israelites and their ancestors are an Afro-Asiatic people. Remember, this is according to their genealogy, that they are Semitic. And of course, Semitic is part of the Afro-Asiatic family. Since the Israelites and their ancestors are an Afro-Asiatic Semitic people, this lets us know the likely Y-DNA chromosome of the people. Because after all, a paternal chromosome is passed down from father to son, father to son. When it comes to the origins of Afro-Asiatic Semitic people, I took more of an old earth approach from an academic point of view. But what does this mean? There are two different views when it comes to the age of the earth in creationism. The earth is either old or young. But what does this mean? Old Earth Creationism Old Earth Creationism is a form of creationism which includes day-age creationism, gap creationism, and progressive creationism. Broadly speaking, Old Earth Creationism occupies a middle ground between Young Earth Creationism and theistic evolution. Gap creationism is a form of old earth creationism that posits that the six yom creation period, as described in the book of Genesis, involved six literal 24 hour days, light being day and dark night, as God specified, but that there was a gap of time between two distinct creations in the first and second verses of Genesis, which the theory states explains many scientific observations, including the age of the earth. Progressive creationism is the religious belief that God created new forms of life gradually over a period of hundreds of millions of years. As a form of old earth creationism, it attempts, it accepts mainstream geological and cosmological estimates for the age of the earth. Some tenets of biology, such as microevolution, as well as archaeology, to make, to make its case. In this view, creation occurred in rapid bursts in which all kinds of plants and animals appear in stages lasting millions of years. The bursts are followed by periods of sta stasis or equilibrium to accommodate new arrivals. These births represent instances of God creating new types of organisms by divine intervention. As viewed from the archaeology archaeological record, progressive creationism holds that species do not gradually appear in the steady transformation of its ancestors, but appear all at once and fully formed. Day-age creationism is a type of old earth creationism in a metaphorical interpretation of the creation accounts in Genesis. It holds that the six days referred to in the Genesis account of creation are not ordinary 24-hour days, but are much longer periods from thousands to billions of years. The Genesis account is then re reconciled with the age of the earth. Proponents of the day-age theory can be found among both theistic evolutionists who attempt the scientific consensus on evolution and progressive creationists who reject it. The theories are said to be built on the understanding that the Hebrew word yom is also used to refer to a time period with a beginning and an end and not necessarily that of a 24-hour period, 24-hour day. Theistic evolution are views that regard religious teachings about God as, com as compatible with the modern sci scientific understanding about biological evolution. Theistic evolution is not in itself a scientific theory, but a range of views about how the science of general evolution relates to religious beliefs. 
in, con in contrast to special creation views. Theistic evolutionists accept the scientific consensus on the age of the Earth, the age of the universe, the Big Bang, the origin of the solar system, the origin of life, and evolution. What are the Afro-Asiatic Semitic origins of Israel if the old Earth model is true? The Afro-Asiatic Semitic origins of Israel from an older perspective would be the Levant with the Natukians, North African, Eastern Saharan, and Horn African. The Semitic family is a member of the larger Afro-Asiatic family, all of whose other five or more branches have their origin in North Africa or the Maghreb. Largely for this reason, the ancestors of proto-Semitic speakers were originally believed by some to have first arrived in the Middle East from North Africa, possibly as part of the operation of the Saharan pump around the late Neolithic. So in red that I just read, it's talking about the origin of Semites in North Africa. Now let's read what's in green. Nengoff sees Semitic originating between the now Delta and Canaan as the northernmost branch of Afro-Asiatic. So in green, we just read a theory where Sem Semites originated around the Eastern Sahara in the now region in Canaan. Now let's read what's in, in blue. Bench even wonders whether the highly divergent Goreg languages indicate an origin in Ethiopia with the rest of Ethiopic Semitic, a later back migration. So in blue, we just read about a Horn African origin for Semites. Now let's read what's in yellow. According to Christy G. Turner II, there is an archaeological and physical anthropological reason for a relationship between modern Semitic speaking populations in the Levant and the Natufians. So in yellow, we just read about the Natufian Levantine origin of Semites. So basically, we have four major origins, a North African, a Nile Valley or Eastern Saharan, a Horn African, and a Levantine origin for Semites. And as you can see in the right hand side of the screen, you have the origins right here in the Horn of Africa with Bench, right here in the Eastern Sahara with Eret, and right here in the Levant with Matobi. There are many other linguists that subscribe to this. And of course, with that being said, most interpretations when it comes to the origins of Semitic people and Afro-Asiatic people is that they would have had haplogroup E. This study covers this, Y chromosome E, haplogroups, their distribution and implication to the origin of Afro-Asiatic languages and pastoralism and reads the proto-Afro-Asiatic group carrying the E-P2 mutation may have appeared at this point in time and subsequently gave rise to the different major population groups including current speakers of the Afro-Asiatic languages and pastoralist populations. And so here is a good map that shows the perfect overlap between Afro-Asiatic speakers and haplogroup E and it does seem like that this would be the likely haplogroup of Semites as well and all Afro-Asiatic peoples. So what about young earth creationism? Young earth creationism is a form of creationism which holds as a central tenet that the earth and its life forms were created in their present form by supernatural acts of a deity between approximately 6,000 and 10,000 years ago. Basically, it's the biblical interpretation that the Most High created the earth in six literal days and rested on the seventh. Everything about the Genesis creation story is taken literally. There was paradise in the garden, but Adam and Eve brought sin and death into the world when they ate from the forbidden fruit. Every human descends from Adam and Eve, but specifically Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The flood was global and destroyed the whole world, while only Noah's family survived. The old ages of people are literal. Example, Adam did live to be 900 years old, 
and basically that the earth is about 6,000, 10,000, or 12,000 years old. So six or seven literal days with the creation story. Literal ages. Everyone coming from Adam, his children, Noah, his sons, and the Tower of Babel event. And all the history you read about in the early Old Testament. So, with that being said, I'll create a playlist of videos for y'all to watch that covers the pros, cons, and science behind a old earth or young earth creationism. Just in case whoever's watching this might lean to one view over the other. With that being said, I'll create two upcoming videos that will solely touch on the origins of proto-Semites from an old and young earth perspective. Whichever model you prefer, I'll give an academic understanding for it. This is why the first video is important, the origins of Afroasiatics, because first we have to understand academically the origins of Afroasiatics in order for us to harmonize the information with scripture. Now we know what to look for in terms of genotype and even phenotype. But at the end of the day, old earth or young earth, it depends on your interpretations. And thank you for taking the time for watching this video. Hit the like button, subscribe, click the bell, and leave a comment. And I will be sure to look at it if you have any questions. And one of these days I will have a Q&A. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And like I said, I will be coming out with two different playlists. An old earth creationist playlist and a young earth creationist playlist. That will, you know, break down whichever view you might want to go for. And that will be coming out soon. Thank you.